Certified SOLIDWORKS Associate Sample Exam Question 3. This question is for building a part. There are a few areas which you should be careful with. First is the unit system. To check your unit system, go in settings. Then on document properties tab and you go to units. Here it should be millimeter, gram, second. I'm on millimeter gram second, decimal places two, and with two decimal places everywhere. So, so far I'm fine. Then the other things that we should be careful with is the origin of the part. In this case it's arbitrary, which means you can choose whatever position you want for this origin. And some of the exams you have to find the center of mass and there the origin of the part is really important. In this case, you are looking just for a mass of the model, so it doesn't matter where the origin will be. The other thing that we have is information that all holes are true all unless shown otherwise. This means that the hole we have here should be true, completely true the model. The next thing is the material and the density of this material. So I'm going here in the feature tree. You have material at the moment. I don't have anything specified. Right click, edit material and look for the material that, it's, that is pointed here. So it's IC 1020 steel. This one here. Check again the density, mass density 7,900 kilograms per cubic meter. You can change the units to see it exactly the way it is. It's correct. And I apply this material. Now, when you look here, you will see that you have this steel as material. So you have to build this part and calculate what is the mass of the part. The hint of SOLIDWORKS in this case is that if your answer is with more than 1% difference than the answers you have here, you have to check your model again because probably there is something wrong. There is also a reminder under the question that says save the files as different ones for the different questions in a case you have to review something and go back it will be much easier if you save everything in different files now what is the hint from me you have three values a b c which will change for the different questions the other values won't change so the model we cha will change you will have probably new cuts and such things but everything except a b c will stay the same as in the first drawings that you have to make it easier for you to change these values i highly recommend to learn using global variables and equations solidworks is advising to name your size with these letters but it's again hard to change it that way if i knew how to use global variables it would be much more easier when i was doing these exams so to add a global variables you go to tools and equations and here the top row, row is global variables we have three which are a for this question the value of a is 81 then we have b and for this question b is 57 
and we have C and for this question the value of C is 43. Once we type it here we just hit OK and I will show you a little bit later how to use them while building your model. So I will start with the drawing in the front plane and I will choose as origin the point here which is the center of the circle. First you have to do is just to draw roughly the shape that you have Be careful not to create any relations by mistake. And also be careful to see the different relations like here we have the line is tangent to here these two curves are tangent to each other we already did that but if you haven't done it you have to add this tangency so the circle in the middle is with diameter 14 then we have that uh, this line is on distance 14 from the center this chamfer here is on the distance 7 and it's on 45 degrees then we have the complete height between these two is 32 this also is on distance 7 and again on 45 degrees so for full definition of this part, we are missing just this size here, the distance from the center, which is 40. Once the lines become black, this means they're already fully defined. So we continue. Here we have also 14. I will move it a little bit from the text so it's more visible. Then we have 10 degrees a radius of 19 Here we have to change it a little bit Then I will go again to the bottom here we have 19, a radius of 5, another radius of 29. And here is something very important, don't miss it. If you see the center of this arc is sitting on this line here and it's on the distance from the bottom on 19. So first I add this size which is 19 and then this should be coincident to the line here. So Okay, then we have from here to here 24, from here to here we have 29, this here is 5 on 45 degrees.
and I think we have everything except A, B and C. So first we measure here which is A, but instead of typing a value we give equal and you see now that you can choose a global variable and I will choose A and then hit OK. And the next in this drawing is B, which is here. We give it equal to B. And there is something which I'm missing is the size for full definition. Let's check if we have our relations correct. Tangent, tangent, here it's not. Okay, this is the size I'm missing. From this point to here, we also have a 29. And now, as you can see, our sketch is fully defined and we can go with extrude boss and here is our value C. Again, if you type equal, you will have the option to choose a global variable. And then OK. So this is our part, the way it's supposed to be. And our next step is to find the mass of the part. We go to the Evaluate tab, Mass Properties, and here you will have the mass of the part is 939.54 grams. And this is answer D. Exactly the same, no difference. So this is the correct answer. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you next time. Bye.